everybody. Hello. Very exciting. Hi, come in and um and pop you pop your whatnots on. Get your cameras on. I want to see your faces. Otherwise, I feel like I'm on television. Who wants that? <laughs> Hello. Right, I'm just going to stream this live on Facebook into the uh, into the group, not onto my private page. Done that before. <laughs> oh, I've got to select it again. That's all right. Ah, oh, it says I don't have permission. Really? You're the host. That's annoying. Oh, well, never mind. I can always put the recording on the group tomorrow, Laura. Yeah, the only other thing I could do, Shana, is I could pop it on the Memory Matters page. Yeah, do that and I'll stream it in. It's letting me do that. I've got the power. Hi, everybody. Hello. Hey, Dan. Dan the man. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Bored and yeah, I'm in, in prison. <laughs> oh, Dan. I'm in prison if you couldn't smell anything in prison. <laughs> Can you not smell or taste or anything? Oh, so even the pleasure of food is gone. But, uh, <laughs> And I didn't hear you. Um, I just said I'm going to be good for Christmas, so that's the positive spin. That is very true. You'll be over it. Ah, well, I hope you feel better. I'm so excited that you're joining us because you're so bored that you thought you'd come to a merry <laughs> <laughs> Uh, welcome everybody. It would be really lovely if you could put your cameras on because I don't like it when everyone's got their cameras off. I like to see your faces if I can. Appreciate maybe some of you can't. That's okay if you can't, but yay, wave at me. <laughs> Hi Louise. Yes, this is good. Lovely to see you. Thank you, Catherine. Hi. Um, oh, I'm being all distracted because it's in my other screen as well. Let me do something about that. Good. Do we think we're all here, Shamaya? Yes, I would begin, Laura, if anyone lets anyone else comes in, I'll let them in. Well, you say that. <laughs> Just begin. No, not ready. <laughs> no, I'd like to say, yes, I am. Brilliant. Brilliant. Fab. Let me just get rid of that. Right. Hi, everybody. It's so lovely to see you. Um, it's lovely. Look at you all filling my screen. Love it, love it, love it. There's a few names that I know and a few that I don't. And more coming in. That's fine. Switch your camera on in 20 minutes. <laughs> it's fine. I appreciate it. You probably you know. I, I know what it's like, particularly this time of night. Um, I've been on to quite a few lives while I'm still trying to cook tea and trying to listen. So that's totally fine if that's your situation. I'm just glad you're here. Uh, but it is really nice to see your faces. So um, let's begin then. I am <laughs> going to just start by saying, you know, I was a bit of a strange child. I'm sure that those that know me won't be surprised. I'm quite a strange adult. Um, while most of my peers, <laughs> Dan's laughing, while most of my peers were listening to, this is, we're talking about in the 80s, they'd be listening to the communards and um, the House Martin, status quo, do you remember that, putting your fingers in your, in your, in your belt loops and, and, <laughs> and doing the dance, those are, some of you are looking at blankly, this was my childhood, um, but I wasn't listening to Madonna, perhaps I should have been, I was, um, I was more into my mum's music at the time, <laughs> so I was listening to Simon and Garfunkel, and uh, maybe a bit of, um, a bit of Bob Marley, and um, I guess one of my favourites was, uh, the particular song that I loved was The Killing of Georgie, by Rod Stewart. Do this if you know that song. 
Yeah, see, Melanie's with me. I bloomin' loved that song as a child, and I used to sing it over and over. I knew all the words, I used to sing it over and over again. And you know the that's amazing. And uh, I used to feel like, you know, when you're listening to a song and you feel like you belong inside it, it's like it's like you're fitting it like a like a suit, like a glove. You're inside a song and it feels amazing. And I can remember feeling like that as a child. And I also remember sitting in a CST group one day. And uh, as you know, with cognitive stimulation therapy, that we always do a song at the beginning and at the end. And we're going to go into more detail about that in a minute. But So, and I had this lady next to me, this woman, who um, we'd just been singing, K Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be, in my best voice. And uh, she put her hand on my knee and she said, I bloody love it here, Marjorie. (laughs) And I just remember thinking, this is why I do what I do. This is why I do what I do. That feeling of being inside a song, it's the best, isn't it? So. Yeah, so I would like in the chat for you to tell me, why do you do what you do? Why? And I'll take a breath. I'm waiting, you're all typing. Is anybody there? Yes, I like to feel connected to people, says Alexandra, because I'm crazy, says Dirk. I don't believe it, Dirk. Um, Violi, am I saying that right? I enjoy what I am doing, Julie, because it's good to make a difference, to make a difference to others. Oh, it's going so far. It's the best job in the world because it feels good. I love seeing people gain confidence and laugh together. It's the best, isn't it? I like to know I'm making a difference, says Kate. Uh, And Louise, I believe it. Um, Anna, to make a positive impact in the lives of vulnerable people Mm. and to learn from others. What a great reason to do what you do, to learn from others. It's so great to come to a group and want to learn. And Melissa says, because you love to see them smile. It's the best, isn't it? It's the best job. Andrew says we get a real buzz. Yeah. Yeah. You're all in it for the right reasons, aren't you? It's that. <laughs> that. Laura, I think you froze. We've lost this now. <sighs> she looks very happy there. Yes, yeah, so at least she's frozen. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing this. Just give her a minute, guys. I'm sure she'll be back, hopefully. Hello. Oh, she's back. You You're back. You're back. Oh, what, what an absolute nightmare. Did you talk nice about me while I was gone? No, oh, we said you look really nice. She was very happy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. So if that happens again, Dan and Shania, it's over to you, love. <laughs> good? Hopefully not. <laughs> Okay, right. So I was about to say thank you, actually, to everybody for coming along because six o'clock on a Thursday evening might not be where you want to be. I don't think Dan would be here if he didn't have COVID stuck in his back bedroom. (laughs) Or maybe you would, Dan. I I would be here. But yeah, I just wanted to say thank you because I really appreciate you spending some time with us and it makes me really happy. Uh, especially when I read those comments to see why you're doing what you do you know we're all in the same boat here I think in feeling the way we do about working with people living with dementia and I hope that I can uh, give you something today that you'll take away that is useful to your work. Um, Just a little bit about today to say that I'm going to be I am going to be doing a slideshow which is unusual for me but I am but that doesn't mean that you can't interrupt me okay I don't want you to feel like I'm just going to talk and talk and talk feel free to interrupt now you can do this two ways you can come on your microphone and say Laura I've got a question that's totally fine 
Well, if you don't feel confident to do that, that's okay too. You can pop it in the chat and Shania will shout Laura at me and read out your question because I don't think I can keep an eye on, on everything. Just a quick inter introduction as well. I'm Laura, I'm co-founder of Memory Matters Southwest CIC, which is a community interest company, which I'm hugely proud of, um, that I co-founded with my sister-in-law 11 years ago. And it is such a wonderful organization because of the people that work in it. Um, and two of them are here today. We've got Shania here and Dan, um, who are just amazing people who make amazing things happen. Um, I'm also a mental health nurse by trade. That's my background, really. And I've always loved working in dementia and helping people living with dementia to thrive. And I also work as a, uh, a mind coach as well. Um, also helping people to thrive. That's what I do. I help people to thrive. I think that's my, my calling in life. Um, and we've been running CST groups for many, many years. 11 to be precise and actually even before that um, I was running CST groups in sort of doing some pilot projects in care homes so we've got quite a lot of uh, experience between us all um, to to hopefully to share with you but that doesn't mean that I'm an absolute expert either and I think you know taking it I think it was um was it Anna who said about uh, wanting to learn from others and uh, and that's exactly how I feel too in the work that we do is that every single day I believe that I learn and certainly every day that I I sit in a group which unfortunately for me isn't as often as I would like it to be anymore um, but having said that we have an amazing team who are doing amazing things on the ground so I'm going to start by sharing my screen hopefully that's going to work I've got Got a little, uh, little bit of anxiety, but it won't. Please tell me, Shania, when it has worked. Can you see it? Not yet. Oh. What about now? <laughs> no, nothing. You haven't started showing the screen yet. Okay. How about now? Oh. Yeah, I can see it. I like doing a little dance. <laughs> okay, so we are going to today, we're going to be talking about the core principles of CST, which <clears throat> for many of you, this will just be a refresher, but I think it's really good to have a refresher and to look at, are we using the core principles? Are there some of those core principles that we've forgotten? Um, so this is what we're going to do. And the first one is fun. And I think this picture just sums, <laughs> sums it up really. Are we having fun in our groups? Are we making sure that we're laughing as much as we possibly can? Are we being silly? Are we being playful? Uh, without it being childlike, um, coming to the group should feel like something we want to do, just like going to a party would be something that we want to do. We feel really strongly about that and, and it is a core principle. So let's let's make sure that we're we're doing as much as we can to ensure that everybody is having fun. Continuity and consistency is the next one. Now, this is actually really easy to achieve when we're providing cognitive stimulation therapy because it already comes with this structure. And the structure, as those of you that are running CST already will know, are these three main things, the opening, where we welcome everybody by using their names, really important that we do that. And you can do that you know, visually by using labels or badges. I know that some groups um, make their own badges and put the same badges on every time. And that's environmentally really good too, so we're not using the same labels again and again, or so, sort of using new labels again and again. But again, we have to ask whether people in the group want that. Do they want their names stuck on their chests? Um, some people may not. And so we have to remember it's their group. But that welcome is really important. And using names is so important. I think it's probably one of the most important words that we ever hear is our name. And um, there's some research to show that we can hear our name being said 
huge distances away and in crowds and in noisy places our brains are, uh, are there to, uh, sort of will pick up our name and that's why we use use names as much as possible to help people to feel important and to feel like they're in the right place ra stands for reality orientation so that's where we use the board um, and we'll write the name the date and the time and uh We'll do this together. And then singing of the song, again, is really important in that structure. So choosing a song when you first get to know people so that you can sing K Sarah or Rod Stewart or whatever it is that people want to sing and have that feeling of belonging in something. And then the word warm up, of course, where we throw a, throw a soft ball and ask people to name things in a category, like things they would find in the kitchen. And then a news discussion. So this opening is the same every single time in cognitive simulation therapy, it doesn't change. Then we have the main topic, topic. so this one's the example is current affairs, so creating a newspaper. And we might do that within the middle part, which will be about half an hour, maybe a little bit more, 40 minutes. And then the ending is you know, saying thank you again for people summarizing the session gaining feedback is a really important part of that ending as well making sure that people have enjoyed it if they haven't what can we change what can we what can we do differently and then of course singing that song again and then reminders of the next session and goodbyes that structure is fantastic for us to hit the target of consistency mental stimulation is the next core principle. And we need to ask if the activity is pitched properly for people. So do we know that they have to make an effort, but it's not so difficult that they feel unskilled? And sometimes that's really hard to do. That's a, that's a really hard line where we want to make sure that there is mental stimulation, that people aren't getting bored, but also that they feel able to do it. And sometimes we have to kind of meet them um, at a place where everybody can do it and then very slowly make it more and more difficult for people according to their skills. So, for example, somebody who is an accountant or has been an accountant all their life, we can assume that they're likely to be quite good at mental maths. And so therefore getting them to score um, sit on Skittles or something and we'll write the scores on Skittles. I mean, that, that can have its own mental stimulation because we're asking them to hold a pen and to write and to do all of those things. But the actual mental math is probably unlikely to be as stimulating as it might be for me to do some mental maths, which would be incredibly stimulating for me. Um, so it is really personalised as well. And you'll see in this picture, this was a, a session on Matisse, the artist, who would create pictures and he would rip uh, bits of of coloured paper to create amazing art and in this particular session Sophie was um, showing the artist's work and then asking people to create their own Matisse piece and as you can see this lady here rather than ripping paper was happier to draw the picture first and then to cut it out and actually you could argue that it's probably more mentally stimulating to do that to draw the picture and to cut cut out than it would have been to to rip so um always be thinking about how can we how can we pitch it and then the next thing to think about is is what differentiation can you have in place for those that need it for so for some people that might be really tricky so this woman is able of course to cut out that fish but someone else may not find that easy and so therefore the differentiation would be that perhaps they drew it and then you cut it out or your co-facilitator cut it out so always be thinking about how you can differentiate for the needs that are in your group new thoughts ideas and associations so we are constantly exploring and learning new things in the groups and this one's really easy to measure um, because you'll be learning as well so i would like to steer away from always doing sessions where you know best, where you have more information than the people around the table and instead be brave enough to sit down at that table with people 
with either the same knowledge or less knowledge on the topic that you're going to lead on. Now, this does take bravery sometimes because we feel that we should be, we should know everything and we should certainly be totally prepared for the group. But I think a lot of, um, a lot of amazing um, um, interactions come from us being curious because we genuinely don't know having props that you genuinely do not know what that prop is, but you know that some of the people in that group might. And it's easy in your mindset to think, oh God, but what if nobody knows what it is and I don't have the answer? And then I throw out, does it matter? Does it matter if none of us know what that prop is? And can we imagine what it might be instead if we don't know? Because actually that's what it's like to live with dementia. Sometimes we don't know and we have to make stuff up and that's okay. And our, our groups should be an environment where we can do that. Um, I talked about differentiation a little bit before, but here's some ideas of, of some things that you can do for differentiation. So having some prompt cards to aid word finding. So we know that some people, if they have aphasia, will find it really difficult to find words. And so if we have some cards on the table with the sorts of words that they might, they may, sorry, that they may need, um, this can really help. Also pictures. Now, this is an example of a gentleman who used to come along to our groups who, he was a farmer and he was very proud of his tractors. Now, if you put a picture of a tractor on that table, you could be sure that he would come into the conversation because of the because of the picture without the picture not so much so finding something that you can put on the table that will it will create conversation from people because there's something on the table which is particularly interesting to them which they are particularly confident about talking about can make all the difference so what we're trying to do is um, create an environment where everyone's skills are are used so it might be you know, somebody might be an amazing dressmaker. So maybe, okay, maybe needlework we're talking might be really tricky because we know that in outsiders particularly that those, um, those skills can go quite quickly for the, the holding of a pen, writing um, needlework. But the cutting out of things is something that somebody can do for a long, long time. The same with baking, or as I said, with, with uh, somebody who, who does maths. So finding that thing that they're really good at and then helping them to really shine. Another thing to do is to encourage muscle memory. So I don't know about you, but there's something really nice about shuffling cards or peeling potatoes or doing something that we don't have to think about, but our muscle memory just does it for us. Um, and we suddenly become a part of something without really having to think. So think about where you can use muscle memory. Does anyone have any questions at this point? Or comments, anything they want to say? All right, I'll carry on then. Do feel free to uh, interrupt me. So the next one is using orientation sensitively and implicitly. So does the activity include subtle orientation clues to the time of day, the season, the place? So we can do this, can't we, by mentioning that we just had lunch, or I might say to you, I'm going to be having my tea in a minute that's cooking downstairs. Just by giving you that information tells you where we are in the day. So how can we do this as much as possible in the group? How, how can we weave in this orientation to our conversations? There's lots of ways that we can do it. Um, in this picture, although it's blurred, you can see in the, in the bottom right hand corner, we've got daffodils on the table. This would have been taken in daffodil season. <laughs> Let's say February, would that be daffodil season? They were early in, in Cornwall, January sometimes you see them. Laura, Dan yes. has asked, will the slides be shared? Yes. Let's do that, Shania. Yeah, I'll send it out tomorrow. 
with the recording. Thank you. Um, opinions rather than facts. This is a really interesting one for me. I'm going to tell you a story about yesterday, day before yesterday. Might have even been Friday, who knows? <laughs> um, but I was on the phone to the GP to talk about my son. Um, he's having a few difficulties at the moment. And he, the, the GP asked me what my son's GCSE results were. Right. Now, Laurie froze. Not such a good pose. Yeah, it's not as good as the last one, is it? I can't even take over that because I don't know what the GP said to her. And we don't know her son's results. No. Sorry, guys. I'm sure she will be back. Hopefully. Irene, are you having sound problems while Laura's gone? Hello. Oh, she's Hello. back. Hello. I'm so sorry. Sorry. It's obviously my connection, and I do apologise. Um, I was telling you a story. I don't know how far I got. Um, you got up to your son's GCSE results, and you wondered why. Okay, so GP. The slides have gone also, Laura. I know, I know. Um, let me get, <laughs> really, let me get the slides up. So what I was saying <laughs> was, so yes, on the phone to the GP, the GP asked me what, um, what my son's GCSE results were. And I didn't know, I didn't know. And okay, so my, GC, my, my GCSE, my GP, obviously, he wants to get some facts, doesn't he? Because he wants to sort of see the whole thing. And um, here's the thing, here's the thing that's really interesting is that when we don't know, when we put on the spot and we don't know the answer, we make it mean stuff, okay? So I got off the phone from the GP and immediately my head is saying, you're a terrible mother. How could you not possibly know your son's GCSE results? Surely you should know that, right? That's what we do. Now, for God's sake, I'm a mindset coach. <laughs> and here I am going down this road. And, but this is the thing. This is what we do. Our brains do this to us. So thinking about this from the perspective of somebody living with dementia, and we ask them some really simple questions, we think. Let me just um, show you some. So some factual questions. Where did you go to school? How long have you been married? What was your job? Have you lived here long? What's the last time you went? When's the last time you went out for a meal? Right. These are all questions that we would ge we would genuinely ask these questions. So, um, you know, I might, I might speak to a friend and I might ask this question. Where did you go to school then? Really simple, innocent question. But here's the thing. If I can't answer that, how do I feel? Where do I go in my head? I should know the answer to that. That's a really simple question. Why don't I know the answer to that? This is why I'm really, really strong about not using factual questions. And I will, I will say it until I go to the grave. Let's find different questions to ask. So instead of where did you go to school? What do you think about schools? Instead of how long have you been married? What do you, what do you think is the secret to a good marriage? Um, or what was your job? Do you think work should be something you enjoy or is it just a means to an end? Ask opinions because we can never be wrong with opinions and from the opinions you may get facts if the facts are so important. So in answer, to, you know, in answer, what do you think is a secret to a good marriage? Well, somebody may answer that with, I've been married 55 years. Great, that's great. They gave you a fact, but you didn't go searching for that fact. And you gave them a question that enabled them to answer in many, many different ways. So um, <laughs> as you can see, that's one of the core principles that I feel incredibly passionate about. Let's change the way we ask questions for all of us, including me. And I appreciate the GP needed to know 
that specific question, but maybe he didn't. Maybe he, maybe he could have asked me, how do you feel about how your son did in your GCSEs, given what, you, what you've just told me? So reminiscence as an aid to here and now. Does the activity tap into the strength of someone's long-term memory? Because we know that that is a strength for people with dementia. Obviously, we need to be aware of touching on, on, on unhappy memories. But also, is there an opportunity for comparing then and now? So rather than going over the same old road again and again, and I think you can, you can even think of this in terms of neurons, you know, your brain cells that are connecting in a certain way. Imagine a road where it's just connecting the same way again and again and again and again. Mm -hmm. We're not doing anything new by telling that story again. But by comparing that with now, it brings in new thinking. So if I show an old toy and a new toy, so the old toy evokes a memory where they get to tell us something, um, you know, which, which helps with, with the way that they feel about themselves. But also they're able to compare that with, with something completely new that they may not have seen before, which is going to create a whole new connection. And that's what really what this is all about is um, how can we get people to be thinking differently and using their brains, every bit of their brain, as much as they possibly can. Providing triggers and prompts to aid recall and concentration. So um, ask whether you have enough prompts. Are there enough props, things you can feel, hear, taste, smell? Um, is there an opportunity for multi-sensory props? So we know that the brain works better when we go in on as many senses as possible, not just one, not just a picture, but also a smell um, or a taste or a sound. So we have much, many more chances of success if we do that. And many of the sessions that we provide, we can do that. If we just think about it, how can we bring in more? You know, we've all been there where we've not, you know, um, maybe prepared so well for a session when we've only got a pen and a piece of paper. And, you know, that's great. That works really well. But what if we also brought in a song as part of that session? What if we also brought in something to touch and to feel, which is part of the part of the um, the focus of that session. Implicit rather than explicit learning. What we mean by this is we don't want to feel like a teacher in front of the class um, telling people <laughs> what will be happening next and um, what should happen and the sorts of conversations we should be having, but rather, as I said before, sitting down and learning the side. So in this in this picture, you know, we've got a gentleman at one of our day clubs who who had handled um, these box cameras before. He knew about this sort of stuff. We didn't. I'd never seen a box camera before. Um, so this is about sort of implicitly um, being part of it rather than saying this is a box camera this is how you open it <laughs> this is what you this is what you do with it so rather than than doing that we would immerse ourselves in touching it feeling it opening it having a look inside looking at a picture of one comparing it it's about this sort of immersive um exp exploration and curiosity bringing curiosity to the sessions asking questions that perhaps we you know we don't we don't know we don't know what we're asking i wonder if questions work at work a treat i wonder if i wonder what happens when you press this button <laughs> uh the next one stimulating language so does the activity involve the naming of things thinking about words word construction word association so again when you're planning your session how can you do that how can you help people to name things and sometimes that's just by having a pause in what you're doing so you might pick up a prop you don't need to name it you see if someone else names it they give opportunities for that to happen
and then stimulating executive functioning. This is a boring slide. There's not even a picture on here. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, so does the activity promote planning and organizing, or, or sorry, organizing skills and mental organization? Um, planning and executing the different stages of an activity. So we do this all the time without thinking with the smallest of things. You know, I hear people using the, the um, example of making a cup of tea, but actually we do it for much simpler things, you know, just getting dressed in the morning or um, just sort of normal everyday things. And also mental organization. And you'll see this a lot within CST. Like, how can we make lists, um, discuss similarities and differences? What word association can we use? How can we categorize objects on the table? I'm gonna give, hopefully there's another slide with some examples on here, yeah. So creating lists together, excuse the typo. Things to take on holiday. So what would you take on holiday in a warm climate? What would you take in a cold climate? starting to make lists as a group now bear in mind um you know what i was saying about asking factual questions when we do that in a group scenario it's very different so in a group scenario we say what would we what would we take on holiday in a warm climate um people can shout out if they know or say if they've got a suggestion and of course there's no right or wrong answer if somebody wants to take a bikini on their ski holiday so be it they shall um, sorting things into categories, so for example, things you'd find in the bathroom, kitchen, wherever. Um, you can sort things when you've made them. If you've made, uh, had a creative session, you've made some art, you might want to sort the pictures into the most colourful and the least colourful. And there's always opportunities to do this little bit extra. A creative activity includes the choosing of materials and the planning of what to do first and then what to do next, you know, even using a paintbrush, having some water, dipping the paintbrush in the water, dipping the paintbrush in the paint. It's all planning and sequencing. And also we can demonstrate these things to prevent overwhelm. So if I'm painting, I might do it first and show somebody how to do it or sit beside and do it with them. Is it person-centered? Does the activity take into account the history, the preferences, abilities, and skills of the person? Are we focusing on the strengths that the person has rather than the areas of difficulty that they might have? Um, this is about really getting to know the people in your group and taking the time to do that and to talk to carers and their loved ones and family and find out what is it that makes them tick? You know, what, what is their history? What was it that they did as a job? because that might give you clues into where they might shine in the group. Laura, we have a question yeah. Um, yeah. from Anna in that to say, Laura, can you give an example of the word construction activity? Word construction activity. Can I see where that was in context? <laughs> Ah, word construction and word association. Um, I can't, I can't off the top of my head think of anything right now, now. <laughs> um, I would be thinking more about how we use words and things like creating poetry as an example or phrases that we might use. The, the, the suggestion of word construction has completely thrown me off because I'm not sure what I mean by it. Um, but essentially it's about using words, naming things, um, having words as part of the session. So I think the best example that I can do put on the spot is um, where you might create a poem out of a word. So you might have a word, for example, um, winter going down. And then you create a poem using the W, using the I, using the N, a phrase from each one. Um, I hope that that helps. Julie's also said, um, fill in the missing letters, hangman. 
That's a great one. Julie, thank you for saving me. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. Inclusion. So all activities are built so that anyone can take part in the activity, regardless of disability, gender, race, income, or education level. This is, um, this is a really interesting one, isn't it? We want our groups to be completely inclusive, but some of this isn't up to us. You know, if we, if we haven't got funded courses for people in their area, then sometimes we have to make that decision to create a day club or create a session that people can choose to pay for. But of course, what that does is, is it's, it makes it uh, uninclusive for some people because they might not be able to afford it. The way forward of that, of course, is to work as a as um as a social enterprise and do your best to uh, to make lots of lovely profit or as we call it surplus as a social enterprise so that you can then uh, help people who can't afford it. But I'll also say that it shouldn't be our job. <laughs> um, the best way is to have these things paid for so that it's free at the point of um, of delivery. Respect is the next one. So does the activity preserve dignity and value the diversity of individuals, views, opinions and beliefs? Now, these are pretty standard, I would assume, for any activity that we provide. And the other thing is to say that it's, it's, this should, should, should say here choice. CST is not prescriptive, so we need to give people choice. Um, and that's why we gain feedback and input from group members because we want to know that we're getting it right and that it's enjoyable. We need to make sure that people are involved, of course, and that conversation is courage between members rather than just the facilitator asking questions to individuals all the time. So are there opportunities for the facilitator to step back and let conversation happen? And that's the magic, that is the end of my slide. So, um, any questions, fire them now. Yes, Anna, a, an acrostic poem, that is exactly what I was meaning. If you haven't got any questions, that's okay too. Um, Melissa's got her hand up. Hi, Melissa. Do you want to come off mic and ask? Or on mic, not off mic. Do you mean me? Uh, no, I was trying to, to understand what is happening with my video. Which one? Which one? Oh, I can't hear you very well, Melissa. I think we might have. I think we might have. I'm on mic now. Yeah, yeah. So, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we yeah. can. So, so my question is about recording, because if you record um, a group in terms of how the activity went, then you're missing the kind of the story of how each individual member responded. But then if you try and because uh, we do three hour sessions, not all CST, but 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 kind of incorporating. So if you try and record individual members, then it's a really lengthy process because we, we run four groups a week. So it's a, a, a question about recording, please. I mean, evaluating evaluating the, group. the group. Well, how to record. Yes. How to evaluate and record um progress or you know people's individual responses or you know whether whether they're declining in terms of their ability to respond to certain activities or yeah the, the general yeah. okay so okay. we so we oh, I'm getting oh, feedback I'm getting feedback yeah I am yeah. That, is it, have we stopped with the feedback? Are we good? Um, okay, so we, we with evaluation, we measure um, four, four different areas and, and we do do sort of a, a quicker 
evaluation. We do do an observation as well. So, so um, let's start with the evaluation that we do every time. So we use the MICE form, which is mood. You might have to help me out here, Dan. Mood, engagement, that's the E. Communication. What would the E be? No, I've got done the E. Evaluation. Dan's helping. I can see Dan is going through to see if he can find me in my interest. Screen. Interest. Thank you very much. Those are the four things that we look at. So then we would do a score one out of five um, for each individual. And um, obviously, if somebody we would look over the week, so we would see that if somebody was not particularly interested, not particularly engaged and their mood's really low, then there's something going on there. Um, so yeah, we don't really, we don't do a huge amount when it comes to evaluation uh, other than that. And we would also write what we've done in the session. And if any, if there were particular interests so that would be really useful um, for particular people. So it might be, you know, we talked about tractors as an example, and George was really elated that we'd then be able to take that interest and, and, and develop it into another group so that George could really enjoy that group. So we do, we have sort of individual notes for everybody and we'll put that down. So we have a timeline of, of, of specific things that, that are, um, are really useful for us to know. But the actual evaluation form is a very quick form because you're right, you know, it's, it's, it could be quite timely, um, quite, quite time, blah, blah. <laughs> I've lost all my words now. Um, but it can take a long time to do. So, uh, yeah, so it's a bit quick fire for us to sort of what between one and five um, and then any notes. So, and obviously we would definitely make a note if somebody was scoring one or two when they usually score a four um, because we'd want to know looking back what was going on. I'm just going to have a look at some of the... Um... We have another question in the chat, Laura, from Danny. Are you running face-to-face -face groups? If you are, how are you managing multi-sensory props in the current climate of COVID? Yeah, it, it is really difficult at the moment. Um, there's no doubt about it. So my understanding is that Sophie, who's our lead facilitator, will um, create a pack for people. Um, so they have their own pack with their own props in. Um, which are, are sanitized in between people. So yes, there's a lot less of, of, um, of moving things around as far as I understand. Leslie's got a hand up. Hey, Leslie. Leslie's one of our fellows. <laughs> Don't tell people that. <laughs> Why not? You gotta live up to it, Leslie. Come oh on. dear. How do I phrase this question then? <laughs> um, just thinking back right to the beginning when you're talking about the orientation at the RO board, um, sometimes I do struggle with this. You, you were saying, oh, I've just had my lunch. So, you know, it's the afternoon, implying it's the afternoon. Can you give me some other examples, Laura, please? You know, thinking um, about the season, you know, is it hot, is it cold? But Monday, Monday. <laughs> You know, yeah, Monday, Monday, so sometimes you have to say it out loud what it is, don't you? So I might come in singing Monday, Monday. <laughs> yeah. you know, you, you've just got to think creatively about how you can just fit these things in. And, and yes, you might look peculiar at times, but it works. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the other thing, you, you tell stories. You say, oh, as I was driving in this morning, I saw whatever you saw that was that to do with that season. So, you know, it might be, oh, there's lots of Christmas trees on the roofs of cars this morning <laughs> as I was coming in. Um, yeah, you do, I mean, you do have to think creatively and you do have to prepare a little bit as well. That's the other thing is you do, you know, with, with practice, it does come quite naturally. <laughs> you just sort of, spills off your tongue but um yeah with 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 some preparation you can you can really do do a lot of it thank, thank you laura i need more practice clearly <laughs> <laughs> leslie you're amazing remember that <laughs> and violetta has got a hand up yeah, hi. I'm sorry, I feel like an um, imposter here because I don't work with these fruits. I'm actually a carer. So, <laughs> um, 
Um, I have a question. Uh, my husband is going to one of these groups and um, he, when he comes back, he doesn't remember anything that they've done or like very, very, very few bits and pieces. So um, would, do these groups actually provide, uh, you know, care as a feedback or because I would like to know what he's doing there. I would like to know how he's doing. I would like to know if there is any, um, you know, any changes in his behavior and stuff, because obviously they are different when they're at home and they're different when they are amongst yeah. other people. So is this a practice with these type of uh, um, organizations that provide these meetings? Because I was actually planning to maybe send an email and ask this question, but maybe you can help me now with some feedback, I, whether that is the practice or not. Yeah, it's, it's, it's such a, it's an interesting one. So in the past, we have done that. So we have madly written notes at the end to give to, to carers to say what we've done but it is quite hard to do for for like six or eight individuals that are coming along so but you're not you know you would absolutely be within your rights to ask to, to ask that question um and I don't know I don't know what the what the situation is with you and whether you go and pick them up but that's a really good time to have that conversation you know just to kind of have a look in the room and see what they've done and, and a quick conversation but it is it is tricky sometimes because if there are you know eight carers picking eight people up that's quite hard for the facilitator to be able to do that but yeah do do carve out some time to to talk to your facilitator and see if that's something that they would be able to do because you're, yes, you're right it's a real shame that that you miss out on what's going on yes he gets picked up and then dropped off so that's why i don't uh... I, I don't see anybody unless I actually physically go there, but because I work, um, I yeah. can't do that. So yeah, I think I might just give them a call or send them an yeah. email. Yeah, I, I don't do. And, and I tell you what else we've done in the past, because I'm just that, it's sort of flowing into me now as you say that, you know, where carers are not able to pick up and, or perhaps, you know, we've, we've had families that live in a different part of the country, then our facilitators will, will often take photographs and send those photographs so that they can see what they've been up to. So that's another thing that can be done, which is actually quite easy for everybody because it's a photograph that gets sent off and you get to really see and, and feel what they're, what they're up to and maybe some short, short little video clips as well. So that, I, I would ask for that. Thank you. You're welcome. We have, we're running out a bit of time, Laura. So I maybe know. One more question in the chat from Melanie. Um, how do you choose a song? Do people have the lyrics? How long do you sing for? Uh, so we will choose a song generally on the first session, but not always, because sometimes it doesn't come as easy as, as you might hope. Um, so usually the song comes from the name of the group. So they, they give themselves a name and, uh, and often when you give them, when, when they, sorry, they give themselves a name, when that name comes up, sometimes there's a song that, that just seems to fit. So for example, one group uh, I can remember was called the Unforgettables. And so they used Unforgettable as their song. Um, so often that's the way that it happens. Do they have lyrics? Sometimes they do, yes, if they want them, um, they, then we print out lyrics and, and they, can, they can have those to sing along to, but not always. Um, sometimes lyrics can be a little bit distracting um, when we can make up our own. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, was that, was that all of the questions, Shania? Was that just two of them? Um, I think that might be it. It's just comments from everyone else, I believe. But if anyone has any more questions, please feel free to email me. Yeah. And I can forward them on to Laura. I think we've only got six minutes left. Yes, six minutes left. Oh my goodness. Okay. So um oh, what what we were we were gonna do some work around um around the observation sheets, which you would have been sent. So Obviously, we haven't got time to do that. I think I, I was going to press too much into an hour, to be honest. Um, but you'll see from that, the, the, sheet, the sheets that you were given is, um, and it's an example of an observation sheet that we use peer to peer. So to use in your organizations to observe each other, or if you work on your own, find somebody else who's providing CST and go and observe them and use the sheet. And on the sheet, you'll find that you can um, 
you can note down um, where somebody could have um, have done something differently or done, you know, I don't want to say better, <laughs> but there were opportunities perhaps to bring in some of those core principles. And, and also sort of you can note down where there were some really good examples of those core principles being shown within the session. And I have to say, from, um, from, from watching other peers is how we learn. We really learn because we're, we're, we're one step back, we're watching other people do it. And that's when we can have those ideas of, oh, we could have done that, or you know, we, we might have done it differently. Or, or that was really good. I'm going to use that in my group. So yeah, I'd really encourage you to do that. So that's um, so that's that bit. So I hope you enjoy that little gift that we've given you in in the observation sheet that Shania sent out earlier. And um, if you haven't received it, just um, just uh, email Shania and and she'll send it again. I'm sure. Um, that just leaves me to say uh, that if you haven't yet had CST training, we do deliver it and we have got a live CST training session in two weeks. I think, Shania, is that right? Have you got the date? Yeah, Thursday the 16th of December. And I'll put the link in the chat now. Fantastic. And that is live on Zoom, just like this. But for a whole day of wonderfulness with lots of um, breaking out into groups and uh, learning from each other lots of videos and all sorts of lovely things. Um, so there's that. Uh, if you can't make that, we do do um, CSE training on online as well, which is lots of little short videos of, um, of me <laughs> talking to you, if you can bear it. And, uh, and then finally, the other thing that we have is our fellowship, which is where Leslie comes in, because Leslie is one of our fellows, is going through the first cohort of our fellowship. Thank you. Those are good um expressions that you're making there Leslie um so and that is where we take you through through a six month uh, immersive uh, training really and coaching for you to provide your own CSE either in your organization or um as a sole trader or <clears throat> community interest company wherever you may be and we will take you through the whole lot of what you need and hold your hand and be on on tap for you at any point, Leslie's nodding. We are there, aren't we, Leslie? Whenever you've got a question, we'll be there straight away to answer it. Um, so that, I think those are the three things that I had to mention tonight, is that right? Yeah. No, and if one I... last thing, the CST Facebook group. If you're not a member of the CST Facebook group yet, please jump in there. Lots and lots of ideas for sessions in there. Um, we, are, we have lots of little live sessions that we do sort of little 15 minutes of CST wonderfulness that you can you can get in there too. So do join if you haven't already. Shania's just put the link in. So I think that's probably all of my plugs. So that just leaves me to say thank you very much for coming along. Lovely to see you. Thank you to those that had your cameras on. I can see your lovely faces and I don't feel like I'm on television, which is nice. And um I'll see you all again soon. Come to the next workshop whenever that shall be. Thank Alexandra, you. yes, there is, is the answer to that. Um, Shania will send you the link. Yeah. You're welcome. Mwah. <laughs> Bye. Have lovely teas if you're having tea. Thanks, Lucy. Thanks, Dani. Thanks, Rona. She's gone. <laughs>